most people, I'm sure, particularly the trainers uh, and even users of Excel, like to see information displayed as a chart. It often has more meaning. So I've already created a chart. There's our chart and we can look at that and we can say, oh yes, let's analyze all that data. But sometimes what you want to do is you want to just have a high level overview, looking at trends. You don't want to look at all the nitty gritty detail, January to December. Oh yes, what's this figure? How tall is this bar? Yeah, you just want a, a high level overview. And that's where spark lines come in. So what I'm going to do is highlight uh, B2 to M4 because that is the uh, data. I think I'll zoom in a little bit as well so you can see that. Um, then I need to go to insert and on insert you have spark lines. You have a spark lines group and you've got three different types of spark lines. I'm going to start with column. So choose the column and it's picked up the range I've already highlighted. So choose the data that you want. I've already chosen B2 to M4. Where do I want the spark lines to be placed? Uh, well, I can actually place them anywhere, but I'm going to put them here because it would make sense to have them just to the right of the data and click on OK. And that is what spark lines are. Now, that in itself might not look too impressive. But if I widen the column, having said that, it impressed me. If I widen the column, it makes it bigger. And the whole idea is that you're looking at trends. You're getting an overview. You're not bogged down by the nitty gritty of January is this, February is this. What we can see, I'll zoom out so that you can see the, the titles, is cream eggs peak in the fourth month, which is December. Chocolate Santas peak in the 12th, 12th month and are going up from about month eight, which would probably be right. Chocolate hearts, they peak in February or the second one, uh, which again would be right. And they start going down slowly. So it's overall trends. If we increase the height of the rows, that will make the chart bigger as well. I'll change the chart type. So what I'll do is I'll I'll just click into here. And when I click into here, we get our context tab. So under spark lines, go to design. We've got different styles so you can choose different color schemes. You can choose these markers so you can choose to show the first point and the last point. You'll notice that it actually highlights the first point and the last point. You can get it to highlight the low point and the high point. We haven't got any negative points, but you could get it to show those as well. And I can even change the chart type. So I'll change it to a, a line chart as well. If I change the data, so let's say I change the, uh, actually, I think I'll change that back to a, a column chart. It's easy to demonstrate. So at the moment, April or the fourth one is the highest. Let's go to April for cream eggs. Let's knock it down to a thousand and it, it does update. So it is dynamic as you would expect. And what you can also do if you select those is on the design tab, you can edit the data. So you can go in, edit the data location, uh, edit a single Sparklines data. So I'll go into there. I can actually change the, the data and the location. So here I could actually move it somewhere else. If I want to have it down there, I could do that. So that is Sparklines. That's one of the new features. When I first looked at this, I, th I thought, what are Sparklines? And then having played with it, having gone into it, I can see the benefit. I see the, the real use of it. So let's close that down. Don't save it. And I'm going to go on to pivot tables, pivot tables and slices. I will do if this will close. Don't tell me it's crashed. There we go. That's OK. All right. So I'm going to open uh, food sales and do a pivot table. So we've got our raw data here. We've got a lot of data. And uh, you may have created pivot tables in 2007 and they are very, very similar. Uh, if I go to insert and pivot table, just do a normal pivot table. 
I want to create the data from or create the pivot table from this data, which it's automatically picked up. Where do I want the pivot table to go? I'll say stick it on an existing sheet. I'll stick it on sheet two and uh, stick it there. Click OK. What I want to do now is um, bring in, um, let me just check, column, um, region. So where's my region? Region is going to be the column labels and the row labels are going to be the product and the actual figures are going to be the total cost. So I have myself a pivot table. Okay, I'm going to create another pivot table. So I'm going to go back to the raw data and insert a pivot table insert a second pivot table and for the purpose of the demo I will put this pivot table in the same uh, sheet okay Come on I can then start dragging things in so I'll have a salesperson here and I'll have um, region here and total cost here. So nothing really new at this point. And if you want to filter, then you can filter like you could before. So you click the little drop down arrows and you can say, I'm only interested in central, for example. But what I'm doing is I'm filtering on a single pivot table. I'm just filtering one pivot table. And that's where slicers come in. So you have to select one of the pivot tables. And with the pivot table selected, I'm on my pivot table tools context tab where I've got the design and I've got the options. And on the options, I can say insert slicer. So it then gives me all the fields from the original table. And if I check product and I check um, region and click OK, what I get is I get these two boxes here, which these are the slicers. So, for example, if I clicked on arrow root, then what it's doing is it's only showing me the information for arrow root. If I click on east, then it's only shown me the information for east, but it's still got arrow root active. I can use my control key or command on a Mac. So uh, arrow root and bran. So what I'm now seeing is arrow root and bran for the east. I can turn those filters off. Now with um, the with that selected. What I'll do now is select the um, one of these. I'll just select one of these two slices and go up here to pivot table connections button that says pivot table connections. Click on it and it shows me both pivot tables. Now it's selected pivot table two because that was the pivot table that I was in at the time I inserted the uh, slicer. But if I tick that one as well, and click OK. What it will now do is if I go to central is it will now actually affect both pivot tables. I need to actually go in and select each one of these in turn, tick both pivot tables and then if I choose arrow root, it now whatever I choose in these two actually affects both pivot tables. So I can actually filter and I'm filtering against both pivot tables whereas previously you could only filter against one of them.